Hey everybody, this week we're going to be exploring Enya, and the theme is movement decks. You're going to see me talk a lot about what I call core cards, um, a medium set and a full set. Right on the screen right now you can is the core cards I consider for all my Enya decks. You might say Barkley Elves doesn't make much sense, neither does Marching Orders which got nerfed, but I'm going to focus on deck thinning and having marching orders is an effective way to get all those cards onto the board. Looking at some of my other cards here, you can see that I have the Elven Mercenaries, another card that um, marching orders can pull, and first lights. You'll see that so much deck thinning will happen, I will run out of minions. And that's why we have to include a little bit more than 25 cards to handle all the deck thinning we have. Now we're going to add the core cards I consider for the movement archetype. These are going to be the Blue Mountain Commandos, the Zoltan Shive, and Sheldon Skaggs, all of which re are high tempo plays. They don't really help you into later rounds, but they're extremely powerful together. Since movement is extremely focused on one round, we're going to balance them out with cards that are good over multiple rounds. And these are our, this is where we're going to bring in the medium set from the dwarf archetype. A medium set will include not all of the cards that are dwarfs, but enough to make it all balanced. So I say the basics for the dwarf set are obviously the Mahakama Defenders. We're going to add in some Dwarven Mercenaries. They're kind of a hybrid between the movement archetype and the dwarf archetype. They're very good in this deck. It allows you to kind of deal with certain annoyances like uh, Cow Carcass and Succubus. These are all really, uh, the Dwarven Mercenaries are good counters to that. We're also going to include Commander's Horn, which is a great card, not only with Enya, but with Dwarves, since you're going to have a lot of units on the same row. And you can get a lot of units on that row quickly with the Elven Mercenaries and the Blue Mountain Commandos. Another card we're going to have in here is the Nature's Gift. That's just so that we can get that Commander's Horn. Commander's Horn is a win condition against some of the higher tempo opponents we're going to be facing. We're also going to be taking Ithleen, who will pull either a Thunderbolt Potion, a Troom, or a Adrenaline Rush. Occasionally we'll use her to pull a First Light if we absolutely have. With all that considered, we are also going to include Saskia's Dragon Form, Sathan Theus, this is? I can't say it. Uh, don't make me. Uh, I'll look it up later. Well, she she's a little bit an iffy card and this is the one card that you guys will probably replace with something else like um Geralt Igni. I am using uh Saskia's dragon form because I have so many dwarfs and elves that I can put on the board quickly so she gets one point for every dwarf on the board and one point uh she gets to do one damage for every elf on the board. Now without further ado we're going to play show you some games with the deck. Hope you enjoy. Okay, our first game is against a Skellige player. I'm going to mulligan out my first lights because I want to pull those with Elven Mercenary. It's just amazing deck thinning when you get that off. My favorite is the Elven Mercenaries into a Blue Mountain Commando. That's four cards out of your deck right there. So we're going to get our Blue Mountain Commandos out. That gets the first part of our movement set. Because I see the War Long ship, I decide against the Defender and go for my Sheldon Skaggs. This is a huge amount of tempo. I basically play two 14-point cards in a row. Now I decide to play uh, the Allen Mercenary. That was basically 11 strength bronze right there, and 11 strength bronze is pretty strong. Now it does weaken my Saskia, but I don't have Saskia in my hand. Still worried that I might lose my Elven Mercenaries. I pull them onto the melee row. If I had Commander's Horn, I would not have put the Zoltan right there in the middle. But right now he just um, interrupts certain <laughs> buffs. Now, placing the buff there actually is really bad. If my opponent had a Geralt Igni right now, I would lose. Fortunately, they don't. Now, if I put a uh, Adrenaline Rush on a locked unit, it's harder for my opponent to remove that because they have to first unlock the card and then lock it again. This Coral is extremely impactful, but it's not enough to 
defeat me. I decide to go with more deck thinning here. Arguably, I could have used... Uh, uh, well, actually, I didn't have very many options in this version of the deck. Yeah. Later on, I will have more buffs I can pick out. I'm going to replay my Thunderbolt Potion. I'm going to be carrying over not too many points into the next round, but at least I won the round. I'm one card behind my opponent, but I have a stronger board presence. So I push out my Dwarven Mercenary, and I decide to go with Marching Orders. I'm fairly, I'm going to pull a First Light and have a Dwarven Mercenary that will allow me to have all my units on the melee row for a Commander's Horn. As I said, Commander's Horn is a win condition in this deck. My next opponent is a rank 17 Consume player. Consume is super high tempo right now. I'm seeing them play Succubuses and uh, Ignis together, which are both strong against this deck. However, I kind of know how to deal with those Succubuses because I got the movement set inside here. I unfortunately don't get a first light off my first Elven Mercenary, but at least I have two Elven Mercenaries. I just thinned my deck of an extra four cards there, which is great. I have a lot of cards into my melee row, but I'm not going to move anything off my melee row until I see the succubus come out. I'm going to just assume my opponent has it. Now, you could argue there that if my opponent used an Igni, that would be really bad. And if they use an Igni here, that would be really bad. <laughs> Fortunately, I got a blood curdling roar that allow me to protect this row from the Ignis when I'm ready. Now arguably I could have moved one of my Blue Mountain Commandos there, but I decided against it and tried to put as many things in that row because I just want a giant Sheldon Skaggs to go off when I get a chance. Now I'm going to put the bear in there. The bear will protect me from <laughs> Igni, which is great. Okay, the succubus finally came out. I have to do some calculating here. <laughs> Don't. Okay, all they move out. Because the Dwarven Mercenaries are the biggest unit left in my deck, I know I can pull it with the Nature's Gift. So here's one card, there's two cards, there's three, uh, three cards, and four cards out of my deck. That's a lot of thinning, <laughs> again. If I was worried about carryover, I shouldn't be. I got a bunch of cards here. So I'm going to keep this. All of these cards are great. I am... Okay. This is why I have shrooms in the deck, in case I need to get rid of these. I only get to do one damage there, but I get boosted by three. I use Thunderbolt Potion twice. And there goes the Grave Hag. Against Full Test, I kind of expect anti tempo cards, like heavy cavalry. So I need to be kind of careful about that. I'm going to open up with Mahakama Defender just in case I pull a Dwarven Mercenary here. I don't want to play, get another Defender. I'm going to continue. I finally get a Dwarven Mercenary. I pull it up, up to the top row. My opponent's playing Weather, which cues me into that he's playing Calvary as an and the weather is just kind of an anti-tempo card. 
and allow me to get a lot of points on the board. I'm being very careful not to get too high pointage on the board. Here I make a mistake, and this is why I'm going to slow it down a bit. Like, if I had missed one of the Blue Mountain Commandos, it would have received, taken less damage. So here the Cavalrymen have come out, I've played the Sh Sheldon's Gags and all that stuff, and I'm taking advantage of my movement set. It's great. I can continue to move cards around. I have to, in this next card, not pull the El uh, Blue Mountain Commando because if I did, it would be too strong. And I end with the Commander's Horn. Which puts me way ahead of where my opponent can go and the Witchers aren't even going to be enough. You can see that my opponent was definitely had a strategy there. 